when nature unleashes its fury. When man-made disasters strike. An exemplary force makes all the difference. With acts of indomitable courage, unwavering commitment to excellence, with more than 8,800 operations conducted, the force has rescued over 1.48 lakh human lives, evacuated more than 7 lakh people stranded by disasters. Here's a story of Angels in Orange, the National Disaster Response Force. Imagine people taking a most awaited excursion and ending up getting stranded on an island after an earthquake has collapsed all its connecting bridges. Or take the case of people clinging onto a tree after a raging flood has swept away their homes in a remote village. When all hope is lost, a helping hand appears. Be it from the sky, swimming against a raging current, or leaping over flames and fiery embers. However challenging and oftentimes implausible, disaster management and rescue work is the chosen profession of a few brave, doughty and intrepid individuals undertaking this life-saving service day in and day out. They form part of the National Disaster Response Force. The NDRF is the prime body that executes rescue and rehabilitation operations in natural calamities like floods, cyclones, structure collapse and earthquakes across India. It is an organization of officers and personnel who have dedicated themselves to serve the country and whose relentless efforts save hundreds of precious lives put in harm's way by the vagaries of nature. Over the years, the NDRF has modernized itself with many effective protocols and upgraded standard operating procedures. In addition, the NDRF has adjusted to the unique challenges of cyclones, floods and other such disasters in a multi-disaster prone country like India. NDRF today is a unique and distinguished force that operates across the country under the Ministry of Home Affairs. It is headed by an IPS officer and consists of battalions from the BSF, CISF, CRPF, ITBP, SSB and Assam Rifles. The mission is that we want to save every single life, human and animals as well, and reduce the damage that any disaster can cause uh, to property, to people, to society in any manner whatsoever. And the vision is to make it the best in the world. Uh, I think NDRF is a unique example of a standalone force which deals only with disasters available through the year at various locations, waiting for things to go wrong and stepping in even proactively to prevent them from happening uh, in an adverse manner to the people. So we try and, uh, we try and deploy ourselves in a proactive manner, in a preemptive manner, so that before it happens, we are there on the spot and we can take quick action. Mid-90s and the following decade saw much international debate and discussion around disaster response and preparedness. They resulted in many decisive action strategies. Some of the most notable and impactful ones were the Yokohama Strategy Plan in 1994 and the Yogo Framework for Action in 2005. Both were adopted by the UN. In the same period, India faced some of its most severe natural calamities like the Orissa Super Cyclone in 1919 and the Gujarat earthquake in 2001 and the Indian Ocean Tsunami in 2004. These events and the international debates on natural calamities underscored the need for a comprehensive disaster management plan. 
the Disaster Management Act that came into effect on 26th of December 2005 was the result of this realization. It mandated a National Disaster Management Authority, NDMA, to lay down the policies, plans and guidelines for disaster management. The Disaster Management Act has statutory provisions to constitute a National Disaster Response Force to provide a specialized response to natural and man-made disasters. In 2006, NDRF was constituted with eight battalions. At present, the organization has 16 battalions. In the beginning, NDRF personnel were deployed for routine law and order duties as well. The NDRF rules were notified on 14th of February 2008, making it a dedicated force for disaster response related duties under the unified command of DG NDRF. The aim of the NDRF is to create a more safe and disaster resilient India by having a very comprehensive, proactive, multi-layer and technology driven disaster management plan. Proactive availability of the force to the states and its pre-positioning in life-threatening disaster situations has distinguished the NDRF's utility time and again. The approach has immensely helped minimize damage caused by the natural calamities. The first major task of NDRF was the Kosi floods in 2008. NDRF resources were moved to Bihar immediately after the Kosi barrage was breached on 19th of August 2008. NDRF handled the situation on raw footing airlifting high-speed motorized boats. 780 flood rescue train personnel were drawn from three battalions and sent to five flood-affected districts. The prompt action helped rescue over one lakh affected people in the initial stages itself. We were raised in 2006, 19th of January, uh, with eight battalions to begin with. Then based on our performance and the kind of uh, disasters which were hitting us more often. The strength now is double of that. So we have 16 battalions now. So that's one increase in strength. Uh, because of that, our footstep also has widened over the country. We have many more locations so that our response time is much less. As soon as I get any uh, information or a requisition, the first vehicle leaves the battalion or a small center within the first 20 minutes. Along with that, we have uh, dynamically improved as far as our equipment goes, as far as our training goes. So with each disaster, we come back stronger, more skillful, wiser if I can say that, so that everything that we do on the ground, there's a lesson somewhere on how we can do it better the next time. So NDRF now has not just grown bigger, it's grown better, better equipped, more motivated. Uh, people see us as the angels in orange. So when I talk to my rescuers, they feel very proud of the fact that at many places in the country, when they have a disaster which has happened or they can't uh, do uh, more than what the local forces are expected to do, they call for NDRF. So the villagers lose a life in a village pond if they can't find the body. Their last demand is, please get the NDRF, they'll find it for us. So that kind of a confidence reposed in my force is a great responsibility as well. So we try and do the very best we can and I'm sure we'll reach that vision of becoming a force which is one of the best in the world. Since inception, NDRF has continued to win millions of hearts by demonstrating exemplary expertise and compassion while performing disaster management role. In fact, the list of such challenges is long, rather very long. A look at some of the notable rescue efforts of the NDRF gives an idea of the challenges involved in their work. In January 2010, a six-story building collapsed in Bellari in Karnataka. The NDRF mounted 
a round-the-clock operation lasting seven days, rescued 20 trapped victims and retrieved 29 bodies. In April 2012, a multi-storey factory building collapsed in Jalandhar in Punjab. The NDRF rescued 12 live victims, trapped under huge mounds of debris and recovered 19 bodies. 46 NDRF personnel were felicitated for their sterling services after the triple disaster in Japan in March-April 2011. In September 2014, torrential rains flooded many districts in Jammu and Kashmir. That marked the first time ever when the NDRF was called to handle floods on such a massive scale in urban areas. Lakhs of people were stranded on rooftops while communication and electricity links were broken. Subsequently, with 23 teams and 150 boats, the NDRF managed to rescue over 50,000 people and distribute 80 tons of relief material. Similarly, in October 2014, when Cyclone Hodhud pounded the eastern Indian coast, NDRF personnel saved thousands of lives. They used saw cutters to cut big uprooted trees and other metal objects scattered by ferociously gusty winds unleashed by Hudhud. In 2015, Unprecedented rain flooded parts of Tamil Nadu and Puducherry, triggering floods in Chennai and its suburbs. The NDRF mobilized teams from various locations across the country by air and evacuated over 14,000 people to safer areas. The NDRF teams also assisted local administration by providing relief and medical care to thousands of people. Efficient performance of any task force is the direct result of effective training and retraining of personnel. This is more so with respect of tasks that involve multiple and intricate skills. Of all the components of the disaster management cycle, response is the most crucial and visible stage. Efficient and effective response to disasters demands many complex skills, physical, mental and behavioral, on the part of the responders. Only an efficacious regime of training and retraining can ensure mastery in them. The responders are responsible for rescuing lives during drowning cases, building collapses, landslides, devastating floods and cyclones. Apart from these, any calamity that results from human activity, be they boat accidents, large-scale road mishaps, all come under the purview of NDRF. NDRF personnel are trained to locate survivors and get them back to safety. The drill also involves keeping people safe as long as possible till further measures can be taken. Apart from helping out after a disaster, the NDRF also focuses on preparedness and mitigation. One of the requirements for the force is to have battalions distributed across the country to activate speedy and timely operations. For better preparedness, the teams often go through retraining exercises to ensure that they are always ready with the latest information. The NDRF has also led from the front by displaying a high level of dedication and commitment. Right after its inception in 2006, the NDRF was sent for the first time on international rescue operation during the triple disaster in Japan in 2011. This was followed by Bhutan River Rescue Operation in 2014 and Nepal Earthquake in 2015. The NDRF was also tasked to help earthquake hit Turkey recently. So Japan triple disaster, we had sent a small team and uh, in Nepal we were there in force because it's a neighboring country and the havoc was widespread. And Turkey came eight years after we helped in Nepal. and. Uh, we realize how much quicker and better we can respond. Uh, the day it happened, uh, Honorable Prime Minister pledged support and our first team of rescuers left the same night. Unlike many other teams which came from across the world, we carried our own vehicles as well. So that we hit the uh, job running as you can say, as soon as we landed we could move on our own, we had everything that we needed, tents, ration. We only needed a local interpreter to find our way and reach the place. So the way India responded, the quickness of response and the strength and efficacy was something which was appreciated across the world and was also an eye-opener for the country as well to see NDRF reaching there across the world in so quickly and doing so well.
Besides exhibiting unmatched professionalism in disaster management, the NDRF also has considerable expertise in handling the CBRN situation, which is the chemical, biological, radiological and nuclear challenges. India is developing sophisticated CBRN defence technologies to be prepared for any eventuality. Appropriate training is the key to right preparedness against any disaster by chemical, biological, radiological or nuclear disasters. Each challenge calls for special training using the right tools to complete the task successfully. The NDRF did creditable work in retrieving missing cobalt-60 radiological material at Mayapuri in Delhi. The incident that took place during April and May 2010 marked an acid test for NDRF's CBRN capabilities. The NDRF is often the first agency to be approached when emergency, rescue and relief operations are called for. Several states have called for help and specifically asked for NDRF teams to be deployed. Formed under the Disaster Management Act, the NDRF's motto, Saving Lives and Beyond, best describes what its personnel do 24-7. My force is already very motivated. We are a much fitter force over the last one and a half years. And uh, I think this realization that other people's lives depend on my skill, on my competence, on my fitness, on my mental toughness. That is something that we need to be aware of all the time. And if I'm aware of that, I keep building it up so that in a situation when people expect things from me, I must not fail their faith. As I end this presentation, I can only say that the nation is grateful to NDRF for all its endeavors. With camera persons, Yogesh Agarwal, Jitendra Negi, DK Pandey, and camera assistants, Dhananjay Singh and Pradeep Kumar, I'm Kriti Mishra, signing off for Sunset TV.